It was September 19th, 1991, when two hikers stumbled upon what they believed to be a recent casualty of the mountains. A body lay partially protruding from the melting glacial ice in the Utstal Alps on the border between Austria and Italy. However, as the body was excavated, it quickly became apparent that this was no recent tragedy. The hikers had discovered the perfectly preserved remains of a man who had died over 50 centuries ago. He became known as Utzi, named after the Utstal Alps, where he had lain hidden for so long. Since his discovery, multiple studies have been conducted on his remains. Dating revealed him to have died around 3,300 BCE, making him older than Stonehenge and older than the Egyptian pyramids of Giza. He was a man of around 45 years old, about 1.60 meters or 5 feet 3 inches tall, with numerous tattoos covering his body. His last meal was analyzed, revealing remnants of ibex meat, einkorn wheat, and even traces of fern, perhaps eaten for medicinal reasons or wrapped around food. DNA analysis revealed that Utzi belonged to a lineage known as haplogroup K1F, with his closest modern relatives in Sardinia and the Caucasus. This suggests his people were part of a broader migration wave that spread across Europe during the Neolithic. His clothing and equipment were a treasure trove of Copper Age technology and craftsmanship. He wore leggings made of domesticated goat leather, a loincloth of sheep leather, a coat woven from strips of goat and sheepskin, a cap made of bearskin, and intricate shoes crafted from deer and bearskin for the uppers, bearskin for the soles, insulated with soft grass netting inside, and held together with leather straps. He carried a remarkable toolkit for survival. His copper axe was a high status item. He also carried a flint-bladed dagger with an ash wood handle in a woven grass sheath, a yew long bow, unfinished but taller than he was, and a quiver made of chamois hide containing 14 arrows. Only two of the arrows were finished with flint heads and fletching, while the others were incomplete shafts. Other items included birch bark containers, likely used to carry embers wrapped in maple leaves to start fires, tools for sharpening flint, a type of grass mat or small net, and various medicinal fungi threaded onto leather straps, possibly used as antibiotics or tinder. This wasn't just a random collection, but an ensemble of gear from an experienced woodsman, hunter, and survivor, well adapted to his mountainous world. He was also found to have had several health issues, including lactose intolerance, Lyme disease, the oldest known case. His joints showed signs of arthritis, particularly in his neck, lower back, and right knee. His lungs were blackened, likely from spending considerable time near open fires, and his intestines contained whipworm parasites. Examinations of his fingernails revealed lines indicating periods of significant physical stress or illness in the months leading up to his death. While none of these appear to have been the direct cause of death, they paint a picture of a man who, despite living a seemingly robust outdoor life, was not immune to the ailments that affected people then, as they do today. So the question lingered, how did this well-equipped, experienced outdoorsman meet his end in this desolate spot? For years, the prevailing theory centered on violence. Researchers examined his body with unprecedented detail using various methods. One of the most dramatic discoveries was made a decade after his initial finding through advanced radiography. Embedded in his left shoulder was a stone arrowhead. This immediately became the leading theory for his death. The narrative formed was one of violence, perhaps a chase, a conflict, an ambush. The idea was that the arrow had pierced a major blood vessel, leading to rapid, fatal bleeding. This theory dominated for years, suggesting Utzi was perhaps a warrior, a victim of intertribal conflict, or maybe even an outcast fleeing his enemies. Adding weight to the violence theory were injuries found on his head. Multiple depressions and fractures were identified on his skull. Some researchers interpreted these as evidence of a severe blow, perhaps inflicted by a club or a blunt object during an altercation, either preceding or following the arrow attack. It seemed plausible. An arrow wound that incapacitated him, followed by a final, fatal blow to the head. However, science is an ongoing process of examination, re-examination, and refinement as new technologies and analytical techniques emerge. Over the decades, Utzi has been subjected to increasingly sophisticated scrutiny, from high-resolution CT scans to detailed forensic pathology. And these new analyses have begun to challenge the long-held assumptions about his final moments. Researchers from the University of Zurich have been leading new investigations, leveraging the power of modern medical imaging to look at Utzi's remains with unprecedented clarity. And what they found has led to a significant shift in our understanding of how the Iceman died. They presented findings that cast serious doubt on the arrow wound and head injuries being the direct and immediate causes of death. Let's look at the arrow first. New detailed CT scans allowed for a much more precise understanding of the arrowhead's penetration. What the analysis showed was surprising. The stone point had not, in fact, penetrated as deeply as previously thought. It had ruptured a blood vessel in the shoulder area, certainly, 
but it did not sever a major artery that would have led to swift, massive blood loss. Their analysis estimated the total internal bleeding caused by the arrow wound to be remarkably small, only about 100 milliliters, roughly half a cup. While incredibly painful and debilitating, perhaps making it difficult to use his left arm or move quickly, this amount of blood loss is not typically considered rapidly fatal. It was a serious injury, undoubtedly, but perhaps not the smoking gun previously believed. Then there are the head injuries. The new, high-resolution imaging allowed researchers to look at the skull trauma from a different perspective. Researchers concluded that the depressions and fractures on Utzi's head were more consistent with not a targeted, forceful blow from another person, but with an accidental fall. When traversing steep, rocky, uneven alpine terrain, a fall is a very real risk. Utzi was found with remnants of fur headgear, which, while perhaps not offering total protection, could have potentially cushioned the impact of a headlong tumble, resulting in injuries that were significant, but not immediately life-ending. Like the arrow wound, a bad fall could certainly have incapacitated him, leaving him vulnerable. So, if the arrow wound wasn't directly fatal and the head injury was likely accidental, what ultimately killed Utzi? Researchers arrived at a stark, yet perhaps more plausible conclusion given the environment. Utzi, the Iceman, froze to death. He succumbed to hypothermia, dying from exposure to the extreme cold of the High Alps. This revised scenario paints a different picture of Utzi's last hours. Wounded by the arrow, perhaps suffering from the pain and restricted movement in his shoulder, possibly dazed or injured from a fall, he found himself high on the mountain pass as weather conditions likely deteriorated. Unable to descend quickly or find adequate shelter, perhaps weakened by even the minor blood loss and the shock of his injuries, his core body temperature began to drop. Hypothermia is an insidious killer. It brings confusion, lethargy, loss of coordination, and eventually unconsciousness and death. Researchers estimated that Utzi likely succumbed within a time frame ranging from just a few minutes to perhaps a few hours after becoming immobilized or incapacitated in the freezing conditions. They must have been truly painful and desperate final moments for Utzi. While death from an arrow would likely have been quicker, this scenario was clearly more harrowing as it unfolded slowly and painfully over time. This conclusion doesn't necessarily negate the presence of conflict in Utzi's final days. The arrow wound and hand injury clearly point to some form of altercation having occurred prior to his ascent. Analysis of pollen in his digestive tract and varied isotopic signatures in his teeth and bones suggest he moved frequently between different altitudes, perhaps indicating a nomadic or transhuman lifestyle, or even that he was fleeing something or someone. The mystery of why he was shot remains, but the how of his death, according to this research, shifts from direct homicide to a demise where injury made him fatally vulnerable to the overwhelming power of nature. Thank you for exploring with us the life and mysterious death of Utzi the Iceman. If you enjoyed, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more fascinating stories from history, archaeology, and the mysteries of the ancient world. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and keep exploring the past to understand the future.